Hi everyone, welcome to Disc Golf Valley Tips and Tricks. We are starting a brand new series here at our YouTube channel for new players to uh, get kind of a jump start on learning the game. And uh, we've uh, created a new account. You'll see that uh, we're only at level six. And uh, if you want to take a look at some of the previous videos that we've already done, you'll get a good handle on how to get an easy quick start on the game. But today we are going for our three stars on Oak Hill. Let's take a look at our bag that we're working with. You'll see that we have picked up a couple of disc packs to help us get started down the road uh, and uh, work our way through the courses very quickly. We've got the Strive Pack and the Tournament Pack to get ourselves going, and we'll pick up more discs along the way. And so if you are brand new to the game and you want to learn quickly, we recommend that you pick up these packs and then just follow along. We'll show you what to do on each course. All right, with that, let's play the game. We'll choose Challenge the Valley, and we're going to ch choose Oak Hill. It's already selected there. You notice that I already have my three stars, but as I was recording some of these about a week ago, I didn't realize I, I didn't have the best screen settings, and uh, so we're working through them again. But as we record this video again, we'll make sure that we get what we need in order to qualify for those three stars. So let's hit play. Now I should probably say that you'll find that uh, Oak Hill is actually an easy course to get your three stars. You won't, shouldn't have any problem, especially if you're following along with uh, what we're showing you. Uh, and the reason is, is because there's a lot of opportunities to get eagles on this course. And we'll show you how to get those eagles as best we can, given the discs that we have currently in our bag. The reason I say that is because we do not yet have a big skip distance driver. And so... Some of our discs might fall short to make it a little bit more difficult to get that eagle on some of these holes, but uh, we'll do our best. And with what we have in our bag, the disc that is probably going to go the furthest in any given condition is going to be our Extra Glide Light Strive. And uh, because the hole is 176 meters down the way, we're going to choose that disc. And the thing to know about these drive discs, they do fade a little bit to the right before they come back. So we'll probably uh, just pull it straight down, maybe just a hair off to the left, and hope that that disc goes the distance. Well, what are we left with? 27 meters. We should be able to get this. The problem that we're facing <laughs> as we start this course over again is some of these early discs that you're presented don't uh, fly very straight. They have kind of a tendency to fade on me, and I'm having trouble learning just how much they fade. But let's see what we can do here. For 27 meters, just bring it down uh, about uh, to the first measuring bar there and hope for the best. There we go. That's our eagle. By the way, here's a little quick tip as an aside. Uh, you might have noticed that my measuring bars are black, and when you play the game, they're white. And sometimes on some holes, especially in some of the courses down the road where you're playing in snow, it's hard to see those measuring bars when they are white. And so if you'd prefer to have them black, let me show you how to do that right now. You'll notice the little hamburger menu up in the top right corner. Tap on that, and you'll see another settings uh, icon show up on the top left. Tap on that, and here um, you want to tap on reach back, and here's where you can change from black to white. You can choose thick black, thick white, whatever your preference is. I think I found the, what I like the best is the slim back, and you can adjust the transparency as well. So once you've got your settings the way you like it, just hit save, and now we can move on. All right, hole number two. And uh, for this hole, given the disc that we have, we'll go ahead and use our Explorer here. Uh, once you pick up a 10-speed, uh, like a roll disc, like a musket, then you have a chance to uh, go for an ace on this hole. But for, for now, we'll just be happy to lay up. And uh, we'll put our pointer somewhere over there and just bring it down uh, just to the second line there. And 11 meters. Yeah. 
here is another chance for an eagle. And given the disc we have, we'll go for our light disc again. We'll bring our pointer down to uh, just the edge of the pond there. Notice we've got quite a strong wind, so I'm going to put a little bit of an Anheuser on this to counteract that wind. And just let the wind bring it back around. And uh, depending on the distance driver you have, you're going to have to learn just how much Anheuser or Heiser you put on that uh, in different wind conditions. You can't just go by what I just showed you um, unless you're using the same disc. And you're probably noticing that I am choosing to use my five-speed compass instead of the putter. The tournament pack that we got did include a putter, but not a very good putter. I don't like using the dagger at all. Um, unless I'm just real close and I can just toss it and then I'll use it. But going uh, with the five speed to throw in my discs from this distance, but even this five speed uh, tends to fade a lot more than the discs that I'm used to using. So uh, I'm struggling <laughs> to get these shots, um, especially when there's a strong wind. But we'll see what we can do here. Compensate for the wind and fade and... Maybe just bring it up just a little bit and see what happens. And it goes for another eagle. And you always like to see those eagles when you're going for your three stars. That way you can mess up badly and still get your three stars. Okay, this hole is actually another opportunity for an eagle. What we're going to do this time is actually use our roll disc as a roller. And when you want to use your roller in most cases you'll switch to a backhand and uh, when you're learning how to do this it's probably good to uh, try it out in different wind conditions in the uh, practice mode because wind conditions can actually affect rollers as well so normally we would put this pointer right about there in a two speed but with this three speed in this direction I'm gonna move it over here and to do a roller, just pull all the way back and slide over to the left. You'll notice that it changes from straight to Anheuser to roller, and that's what we want to start a roller. You see that disc just goes up and down, and uh, then just let, let it go, and off it rolls. Ooh, that left us way up the hill. Not good. Yeah, this wind, like I say, can really affect uh, how the disc rolls. Uh, let's move to lie and just do a layup, I think, um, and be satisfied with getting our birdie on this one. Let's just uh, probably just bring it down just a little bit to do a layup for this. And then we've got an easy backhand throw in and at this distance even though we've got a strong wind it's not going to move much so you can pretty much aim for the center on this 11 meters should be fine it might go up just a little bit let's come down and then pull back as normal and in it goes for our birdie all right I forget now which one works the best. Any one of these drives is probably fine for this. Let's use the roll disc. And um, let's put just a little bit of a hyzer on this. Well, that's not an ideal drive, but uh, let's see if we can work with it here. Yeah, for our eagle. In your practice mode, uh, I kind of forgot which drive works the best there. In your practice mode, um, learn which drive disc or which distance driver you have that is going to in any given wind condition gets you a little closer to the basket on that. So you have an easier throw in. Okay, I think we're just going to do a layup with our seven speed here. Up over the hill. That 
brings us right to the edge of the little river there. And here's another chance for a eagle. For 36, you want to bring it down just a little bit below that line. Watch how the adjuster moves up and down. And if you kind of lose track of how much it's moved around, you can always go back, bring your disc back to the placeholder there, bring it down again, and uh, try and release it before it moves around too much. Ooh. It almost stayed in. But uh, we still get a birdie. Okay, on this hole, I think we found that our roll disc, our roll strive works the best. And we put our pointer about there. Put a little bit of an Anheuser on it. We don't want it to go down the hill too quickly. We want it to go off to the left a little bit before it comes back. We want it to ideally touch the top of that hill. Ooh, looks like it missed it, but, oh, nice. <laughs> it hit the pole of the basket there to slow it down. Otherwise, it uh, could have gone way up the hill. If you're struggling to get your eagles, I recommend going back one video in our series here and take a look at the practice run that we did on Oak Hill. We show you uh, the different things that you might have to do in order to get uh, your eagles here. Let's uh, see, 18 meters, that's going to fade a little bit. Let's bring it over about there. And... Ah! Didn't fade as much as we'd like. Or we didn't pay attention to the way it was moving, wobbling back and forth. But really, that's all we need is a birdie. This is a little harder to get your eagle on, given the discs that we have, but we'll give it a try. We want to go in between these two trees, so learn what you have to do with your distance driver to get in between those two trees. And a disc that has a big skip attribute is going to work a little better than what we have today. But that did get us up the hill pretty good. And let's see if we can get this. But if you have a big skip distance driver, you can skip up that hill and be a little closer to the basket for your throw in. All right, last hole. And the um, recoil disc actually works pretty good here, the big skip recoil. Just uh, lift it up. If you're brand new to the game, this is the first time you're observing, just note that there is a mando here. You have to go to the left of that mando. Usually bring it up a little bit and then go half a hyzer on this. And back for our birdie. All right, that gives us a minus 12. And I think in order to get your three stars, you only need like a minus nine. So let's take a look at what your rewards are when you uh, three star Oak Hill. You get an explorer. Well, like I say, we already have a, a, a better explorer than that, so we probably won't put that in our bag. Let's uh, see what this is. Oh, here's a fuse, a mid-range fuse. I like those. We'll probably swap out our compass for this fuse. Even though it doesn't have any attributes, it's probably still better than the compass. Yeah, I think it's probably going to fly straighter. We won't have to worry so much about the fade. So we'll pop that in, and the other one is just another compass. Although this one is an accurate extra glide. 
And so with the accurate attribute, it's not going to wobble so much when you pull back the disk. So that's a possibility as well. I think it's still going to fade quite a bit. The compass just fades to the left. See, look, even the test drive is showing you that. Um, if we just pull straight back, we see that it does fade quite a bit compared to this fuse. Let's test drive it. It's much straighter. So if you like straight disks, you probably want to swap that out. All right, well, that does it for our video today. Three stars on Oak Hill. Hope you were able to pick up a few tips and that uh, you can pick up your three stars on Oak Hill. And we'll see you next time here where we visit. Let's see what our next course is going to be. Uh, Lakeside, that's a fun course. So we'll see you down the road and we'll take a practice run on Lakeside and show you what you need to do to get your three stars on Lakeside. See you next time. So long for today.